все было в той важной посылке, в той важной сумке фильма. Experience. Um, 
but these days, you know, when we're working at the studio or when we're here, wherever, there's always cameras that are recording everything for websites and for DVD extras and, and all this stuff. So it's, it's sort of a, without sounding blasé about it, uh, you sort of get used to it. You know? Вопрос такой. Тот факт, то, что фильм будет идти в кинотеатре, надеетесь если вы, что он привлечет новую аудиторию, кроме фэнов группы? Спасибо. Um, we'll see. I, uh, when some kind of monster came out 10 years ago, um, there was a, a quite a lot of uh, people in the, in the movie community who really uh, embraced this film and who found something uh, in that movie that they liked. Uh, a lot of people, or some people in the music world, uh, thought that uh, the movie was a little too transparent and maybe a little too revealing. Uh, I don't necessarily look at, you know, at the people at the receiving end of what Metallica does, whatever that is or whatever project it is we're doing, I don't look at them as sort of, you know, they're music fans, they're film fans, they're Metallica fans, they're not Metallica fans. I think that these days, it's such a, a varied and, and unpredictable um, audience that we have out there. If you put 50 Metallica fans in front of me, you get 50 completely different attitudes and outlooks on life and 50 different um, uh, ways that Metallica plays a role in their life. Uh, so... <coughs> I think this movie and the feedback we've gotten from people who've seen this movie is that this movie is quite an experience, quite a ride. It certainly is a unique film and um, I would say that um, it would be uh, nice or cool if, if there were people outside of, of the Metallica hardcore fan base that appreciated the movie for what it is. I, I've heard feedback from lots of people who are not necessarily Metallica fans who've gotten off on the film uh, and, and who sort of... Um, just appreciate, like I said, the uniqueness and, and, and that it's a, a different kind of a, a film than anything they've seen before. So, um, uh, you know, we'll have to see how it plays out, but the, so far the word is good. Металлику постоянно обвиняют в том, что вы пытаетесь заработать деньги на всем, на чем только можно это сделать. Вот сейчас выходит этот фильм, и у фанат, конец фанат, появляется еще одна возможность э, наехать на вас, грубо говоря. Э, как вы реагируете на это? Что вы можете ответить этим людям? И второй вопрос. Э, есть э, замечательный материал про группу Дескот, самую успешную группу в мире. Видите ли вы какие-то параллели между фанатами группы Дескот, изображенными в мультфильме, и вашими фанатами? Спасибо. Actually, Brendan Small is a, a great friend of, of mine, and uh, but there's no parallel. I don't think I mean, uh, yeah, we, we don't really spend time thinking about, about that sort of thing. Um, as far as the money issue, uh, if anything, I think with Metallica, we take risks and we challenge ourselves, and we put ourselves out there in a way where it's not about making money, it's about doing stuff for our fans so that we can, you know, Again, make, of course, make ourselves happy because we're so creative, more passionate, passionate about our creative, creativity, but also, you know, to to also embrace our fan base and and take them on a journey with us. You know, that that's sort of the priority. Uh, making a film like this is extremely scary. This is not like, oh, we've got all this money and we're going to make this film because we want to make more money. The chances are is that we're not going to make more money off this thing, you know, and if anything, I think it's, uh, it's more driven towards the art of, of filmmaking or creativity, you know, that's really the center of it. Um, I mean, if we can make our money back, great. You know? I don't know who Death Clock is. He doesn't even know who Death Clock is. <laughs> I do because I love cartoons, I love animation. Yeah. Yeah. Здравствуйте. Сергей Евгений, портал Metal National. 
Раскройте нам секрет, на каком этапе находится. Добрый день, ребята. Михаил Артем от Айвет Пальмира. У меня скорее вопрос ближе к Ларсу. Да? За основу фильма вот сюжета не была ли взята твоя жизнь в того периода, когда ты тусовался с Даймонд Хэт. Вот как ты можешь это прокомментировать? 81 <laughs> You know that uh, we encourage the movie-going audience to sort of get out of the film whatever they would like to get out of the film. I'm not going to sit and carve out in stone what this film is supposed to mean or what it's supposed to represent. But I do think that there's a, um, a parallel between 30 years of, of talking about you know Metallica or being asked about Metallica messages and what the lyrics represent and all this type of stuff. If, if there's one common thread through all of this for three decades is that we encourage people to sort of figure out for themselves. Um, great film, great painting, great literature, great poetry, great music. I'm not putting metallic in that bracket, but I, I do feel that it's always more exciting, at least for me as a fan of great art, when I have the opportunity to kind of mold it to what I think it, it should be and, and figure it out for myself and kind of paint my own landscapes uh, you know so what does this film mean uh, if, if it represents young Lars uh, following Diamond Head around in England in uh, 1980 then I'm not going to say it doesn't uh, I don't know if Nimrod Antal who wrote the story of Trip knows who Diamond it is but uh, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> Maybe he, maybe he knows more about this stuff than, you know, I've never asked him, you know, when we, um, I, I, what appealed to me and what appealed to us about his screenplay and about his ideas was, you know, it was originally titled Chaos, and there was this whole kind of underlying chaotic mad feel to it that we thought would be a really good companion to the concert, that the balance between the concert and this crazy world that this uh, runner slash rogue inhabits would play really well as a counterpart to to the concert experience. Um, and you know to be honest with you, you know, we sort of sat around and scratched our heads a little bit too. Uh, obviously um, reading this in a script form was very unusual because um, of the lack of dialogue. I don't know if you've ever seen a movie script but there's you know 120 pages of dialogue in it and um, This was a 15-page script with no dialogue, so it was quite peculiar. Again, I think the beauty of, of his great script and the way he executed the narrative part of this film is that it's so ambiguous, and I think it's the perfect, perfect, perfect counterpart to um, the crazy world that takes place up on stage.